This is NBC6, South Florida Today. Hey, good morning to you, South Florida. I'm Lonnie Quinn with my good friends here, Trina Robinson and my best friend, Bob Mayer, over there. Best, best guy friend, how's that? Okay. Uh, hey, we've been talking about it all, all morning long. It, it's, uh, it's my swan song from yeah. TVJ. This show right now. Is the last is show you'll do show. here. Mm. But this I keep telling so you to sad. concentrate. It's sad yeah. for everybody, but I want you to concentrate on the new life that you're beginning with yeah. your wedding Saturday and then your new job in New York. Yeah. It's a great, great thing that's beginning. You know what? We're, you. And we, we, we've got lots of great things to talk about. Mm -hmm. We have so many things we'd look back on, but let's look, let's look forward, not just to what's going on necessarily in my life, but really what's going on in the news and what people are talking about. No, 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 wait, David wait. Beckham, all right? David oh, okay. Beckham is pretty much the, the biggest you know, soccer star on the planet. Bend it like Beckham. He's the, yep. the name behind the movie. Uh, he's making a big move, a big movement involves the United States and David Beckham. How the biggest soccer player in the world decides to come to play in the United States. That's, that's a, I mean, that's earth shattering. Let's get over to Ari Otter and get all the details. Ari. Well, you know, I don't have a whole lot of details over here, Trina and Lonnie and Bob, but I can tell you that Brazilian fans might dispute your contention that he's the greatest soccer player in the world. However, he's probably the most famous soccer player in the world. And at one point, he may have been the greatest soccer player in the world. David Beckham we're talking about. There he is with his, with his equally famous wife, Posh Spice, as they say in Britain. Anyway, he's leaving Real Madrid, where he's spent the last few years playing, to come to the L.A. Galaxy of Major League Soccer in the United States. That is huge for American soccer. It's huge for the fledgling professional league that we have here in the United States. Because even though he's not in his prime anymore, the fact that he'll be playing here, he's still a huge draw. And everywhere the L.A. Galaxy plays will play most likely to sell out crowds because of David Beckham's presence. The captain of the British uh, World Cup team is coming to play for in the United States, and it makes a statement about the quality of play in the United States in Major League Soccer. And it's also going to be a, a huge splash internationally because the entire world will now be perhaps looking at Major League Soccer, the American League, with a little more respect since somebody like David Beckham has chosen to come and play here. So we'll have to see how it plays out. Unfortunately, we don't have our team here anymore. Remember a few years ago, we used to have the Fusion? It'd be great if they were still here so we could see Bex play here in the U.S. By the way, that's what they call him in England, Bex. Bex they go Bex. by the short term there, Bex. In fact, he is known in England as the Lonnie Quinn of soccer. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've heard. Well, Thank well, you, Ari. He's, he's studly. Hey, but yeah. you know what's funny is that when, when uh -huh. Ari said uh, there may be some Brazilian <laughs> soccer fans out there who disagree. Well, he's we, not the greatest, but he's probably the best well, known in the U.S. There, there are some... And quite a bit around the world. Yeah. And not necessarily for soccer. It's more like he's a sex symbol. And he and, you know, Posh, you know, I... Spice of the Spice Girls, hey. you know, they are into fashion and everything. So yeah. they're bigger than just soccer. And nobody bends a corner kick like like. Beckham, I mean, it's unbelievable. But, you know, have, be, marrying into a Brazilian family Saturday, I can tell you that, uh, yes, I will hear about this when I get home. Uh, I'm sure they're thinking Ronaldo or uh, Ronaldinho. Uh, they, they probably think they're the best Bonnie, players. I don't want to take away from time that we've allocated to you. So I, I have, allocated. we're, we're going to talk later about uh, more about your leaving. But I have just one email to read out of the hundreds and hundreds of emails we've gotten. This one really got to me. It says, Dear Lonnie, this email might not get to you in time, but I'm hoping that it will be forwarded to you. I know I should have written sooner, but I couldn't make myself write this letter. I learned of your departure Monday morning. Needless to say, I jumped out of bed in disbelief. I even got sentimental because you're part of my everyday life, and you were one of the few things, Lonnie, that would make my daughter speak. My daughter Clara is six and a half years old and a high-functioning autistic. In the years she wasn't talking, she would always wake up saying with an Irish accent, Lonnie, I believe she heard you do your Irish accent. She picked it up. She loves weather. You can't imagine how happy she was to see you every morning. This morning, as we were getting her ready for school, your last weather forecast came up, and she started to cry. She knew that it was your last broadcast on Channel 6, and she got very sentimental. As all of us are. It's, uh, you know, you so much. You guys are, I'm telling you, hey, people out there watching, they don't want to see me, uh, you know, uh, getting all... It's a, it's a tough day. You know what? It's a tough day for me. And I, I think that you have to open a door sometimes to find out what's behind it. And, uh, and, and you know, and that's what, that's what I'm going to do. And, and, and I, I told you before. And you're I, not I mean this, right? Hey, you're I mean not, this, you're not I mean just, this like, so sincerely. And never see us again, I right? hope my path takes me away and gets me better at what I do and then brings me right back home. It's been a long time since I've been able to use that word in reference to myself, because I have had a career where I bounced around from city to city and uh, doing doing different TV jobs here and there, and you never get a chance to put down roots. And hey, you got a nice house to come back to. I got a, Bob, <laughs> talk about talk about a family here on the morning show. 
I bought Bob Mayer's mother-in-law's house. I came into the, I came into work one day and Bob goes, anybody want to buy a house? I said, I'll, I'll buy a house. Yeah, no, look, Mr. Key Biscayne, there's nothing sexy about this house. It's my mother-in-law's house. I'm like, Bob, I'll buy the house. Okay. He, he Remember, a house? I bought the house and I called my fiance and said, honey, I said, we bought a house. She goes, really? Where is it? Remember, I gave you a check for five grand right here as a down payment. And she says, where is it? I said, and then I'm the not, check bounced. I'm, yeah, that just, <laughs> I said, I'm not really sure where the house is, but, but I know it's in it Dade County. It turns out to be. It turns out to be. It's amazing what you did to the it's house, It's about too. eight blocks from my brother's house. Oh and he didn't God. know this when I, I told no him about idea. the house. I had no idea. And then the best part is, you know, she says, well, how many rooms? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't really know how many rooms, but, you know, whatever. And she said, well, what color is the house? Yeah, no, don't know that, that one. That was kind of like when he bought the boat, too. But, you know, we made him turn uh, the boat him back in. That, yeah. we, <laughs> no, you know, when, when I bought, remember I bought the boat live here on, on this show. You were doing yeah. a story at the boat show. And, and, and I got we're a like, Lonnie, deal. don't buy a boat. Well, no, wait a second. It, it, listen, I want to give some kudos out here because a lot of times you buy like a used something. People go, oh, God, the last of the horse traders. The gentleman who sold me the boat, you know, live here on our show, and I paid for the boat. Well, before he made the delivery to me, he said that he came across, you know, there's something, Lonnie, that's not functioning quite right. I don't want to sell this boat to you. I, of course, told that story to Bob Mayer, and Bob says, the guy got a higher bidder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me tell you All what we have coming up on South do. Florida today. We are going to preview the Bow Arts Festival at UM this weekend. Uh-huh, and it's that time again. We'll have some expert tax tips, and we'll take a tour of South Florida in a very tropical way. Tropical history tour. Yes. Magical mystery tour. Plus, any green thumbs out there? Do you have them? Do you have them? Do you have them? You know you do. Well, we're talking topiaries today. But tiny topiaries. Tiny, teeny tiny, tiny yes. green thumbed topiaries. And a sneak peek at how you can get uh, a close look at some priceless jewels and gems. But first, we get over to the news desk yeah. with you know our him? friend, Mr. Bob. You know, he's been just hugging up on me all yeah. day. Enough of that, Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Later. It's the story you saw first here on NBC6. Police tell us one man is dead following a chase that started in Miami Gardens and ended up in front, in front of the Opa Police Department. Tisha Lewis standing by now at the department with details. Tisha. Good morning, Bob. It's really an ironic twist in events. We're told that police were chasing a driver and it ended here in front of the Opelaka Police Department. If you look behind me, that orange crime scene marking, just a small reminder of what we're told happened just around four o'clock this morning. Now, what we're being told is that one man is dead after a pursuit that started in Miami Gardens and ended here at the Opelaka Police Department. Sources are telling us that unmarked black units with the Miami-Dade County were following the driver and when they attempted to pull the driver over that driver refused to stop now we do not know if the driver is a man or woman what we do know is when officers attempted to take the driver into custody that person resisted arrest there was then we're told and I quote there was a hand-to-hand -hand struggle some sort of fight it ended with the driver going to the hospital and later being pronounced dead now nearby workers tell us that they woke up to quite a chaotic Scene. About seven or eight cars out here. You know, putting flares up, blocking the street off. Probably making a lot of people angry. I was when I first came out, just Opalaka. The uh, Miami Day didn't show up until probably seven this morning. Again, a nearby worker is telling us there were about seven to eight cop cars outside the Opelaka Police Department. Now, you're taking a live look at remainders of flares that were set up. We're told that traffic was closed in this area for quite some time this morning and opened back up just about 30 minutes ago. Now, police are only confirming that there is a person dead. They will not tell us if it is a man or a woman at this hour. We'll bring you more information as it becomes available. We're live in Opelaka, Tisha Lewis, NBC6. Thank you, Tisha. Beginning in November of last year, a series of armed robberies at South Florida gas stations caught the attention of police. Now, detectives in Miami-Dade and Broward are working together in an effort to identify those people. Police have gathered video surveillance tapes from several of the locations and are now looking for the two men believed to be responsible for up to 15 robberies. If you have any information on these crimes, please call Broward Crime Stoppers 954-493-TIPS. And speaking of the Super Bowl, which we weren't. Some <laughs> high-ranking officials in Miami-Dade and Broward are getting the hookup on tickets, sort of. They're being offered Super Bowl tickets at face value. 600 bucks. Most fans pay about four times that. But according to the Miami Herald, about half the public officials say they are turning down the tickets as an improper gift. Face value tickets generally go to corporate sponsors, team owners, and season ticket holders. 
Super Bowl 41, here we go, has just arrived on South Florida turf, literally. The field for Super Bowl arrived at Dolphin Stadium this morning. Installation of the grass expected to take at least three to four days, that turf being paid for by the South Florida Super Bowl 41 host committee. The estimated cost, $250,000. Two South Florida parks closed today because of an invasion of bees. Yes, bees. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue shot this video as they attack 30,000 bees in a tree at Arch Creek Park. Firefighters and bee experts cut out the hive, which was half the size of the tree, pumping a special foam through the trunk to kill them. Fire officials say the bees are most likely honeybees and not killer bees. Now to Trina and the weather. All right, Bob, thank you so much. And we take you outside. This is our downtown camera from the Bank America. And it is a kind of overcast day. We've got some high clouds, some low clouds, and we got some sunshine peeking through. There you see the blue sky. Not a lot of it, but we're going to see kind of a partly sunny to partly cloudy day. And it's still going to be on the windy side, unfortunately. We can't seem to get rid of those winds. All right, let's take it to the maps. Hairspray kind of day out there with these breezy to windy conditions. Consequently, with the wind still ripping, we're going to have a rip current danger out there. Still very high if you headed to the beaches, the rip current danger. So be extremely careful and make sure you swim where you see the lifeguards. Rain chances, though, minimal right through the weekend, except, you know, on this easterly flow, you can always get that... Uh, a little bit of a shower coming in here and there. Taking a look at the winds right now, east winds at 20 in Fort Lauderdale, Miami at east winds at 15. So yes, we do have that easterly flow. And of course that always favors those overnight and early morning showers. But during the day, we should be pretty dry. Visible satellites showing the clouds coming in off the ocean. And so that's why you're seeing that good cloud cover out there. And it's blocking out a lot of the sun. Here is the satellite picture and not a whole lot going on for us right now. And that's a good thing. High pressure has set up shop and that's going to make for some nice weather over the next couple of days. This afternoon, we're looking forward to a high of 76 degrees. We keep it on the windy side. Evening dropping off the 73 breezy. And then overnight, we'll see 68 and again, the possibility of a shower. 73 in Miami right now, humidity at 57%. Winds out of the east at Miami International Airport at 13. And today, here's how things are going to shape up. We keep in that rip current risk as long as that persistent east on floor show uh, flow continues. High pressure sliding in, and so that's going to make for some nicer weather. Tomorrow, still breezy, but we get a little bit more sunshine in here. And then the weekend is looking really good. And then we don't really see a return to, say, the shower activity until we get into next week. Uh, the winds start to relax a little bit over the weekend, but it stays on the warm side. So east wind today at 15 to 20. And there are your tides right there. Choppy out there on your bay and inland waters tonight. Overnight low of 69. Maybe a quick shower on that easterly flow. And here is your six-day forecast. And again, it's a pretty decent one. Cloudiest day today. We are uh, keeping some clouds tomorrow, but more sunshine tomorrow. Weekend looks good. We don't really introduce um, real rain in here until maybe next week with a front. All right, well, there you have it. Coming up on South Florida today, we're going to preview the Bow Arts Festival at UM this weekend. Plus, oh no, say you don't so. It ain't so. <laughs> it ain't so. <laughs> on flow show. It is almost tax time, believe it or not. We're going to yeah. have some tips on how to get a refund legally. Oh, I love that. Uh, and where you can find some gigantic gems and get up close and personal with them. That's all coming up when we come back on Lottie's Last Day. Oh, look at this. You, you, this is NBC6, South Florida Today. Hey, welcome back, everybody. The Bow Arts Festival is an annual cultural event right here in South Florida, featuring close to 300 artists and mediums from ceramics to jewelry to photography to, hey, wood to everything, basically. This year, the festival's getting a little help from the folks over at the children at the Holtz Children's Hospital. Joining me now is Budge Mead, a longtime participant of the Bow Arts Festival. Hi. But, hey, now, Budge, what is your, you, a longtime participant, is that, is, what is your role? 13 plus years. Okay, 13, 13 plus, plus years. years. That I've been actually doing shows and gotcha. including the Bow. You arts know, let, let me ask you this though. Like in terms of arts festivals, it seems like South Florida is like the capital. I mean, we got all kinds of them out there. How, how is the Bow Arts Festival different from any other festival that I hit? And I hit a lot. I go to a lot of them. Well, yeah, and actually, I've done a lot throughout the United States, and the Bow is probably one of the best. I mean, really? It's, yeah, it's great with. It's easy on the parking. I wouldn't say it has the most numbers, but that's not necessarily a great thing. That doesn't. You that, want, that means, yeah. Sometimes exactly. I gotta tell you, I, I, I love all of our arts festivals in here. I mean, I, I, I talk all the time how I just I, I love them, but. Right. Sometimes they're so packed. 
Yeah, and it's, it's overwhelming. It Whereas is. Whereas the parking is very easy. They're gonna have live entertainment, uh, great food, and um, they actually want you to bring your children. If you, you know, have children to bring, they have an arts program where you can uh, bring your kids, drop them off, they'll do art. They have to be ages five and up to do really? it. But you can drop it and you uh, drop them off. And, yes. and they're supervised and oh, it's all. Yes. They've been doing this for years. Okay. Yeah. 56. Okay. Exactly. okay. I believe and, that's right. Yeah. 56. Yeah. And and I'm, I'm assuming you're raising money with, with this. And yes. where's that money? The money go goes to? to actually the museum itself to help them purchase new pieces of art for all of us to see. And, and, also and what museum is that? Is that the Low Art Museum okay. at the University of Miami, which is where the show is. Gotcha. So MapQuest University of Miami. Hey, is there but a... But I didn't say oh, the sorry. other part, which was that the, also the money goes to elementary students who don't necessarily get the chance to come really? out and see art. They have field trips to come. To well, that's get to great. See it. Don't you find? I'm like, don't you find? It's a fact. It seems like art programs and music programs get cut all the time. Yeah, actually, I used to work for Dade County Public Schools as an art teacher, and you know, uh, Miami art program is probably one of the best in the nation. Well, that's all good. the nation looks to us. I love. It. I think it just makes makes yeah. life so darn colorful. I think. Yeah. What about um, admission getting into this year? Because some charge a an admission fee, some don't. Yeah, some have been doing that. Uh, there's no admission. Good. There is parking, I believe. I don't know. I don't know that there's a charge or not for that. No, but, but the, the idea, I, I like it when you don't charge. Now, one school of thought says, hey, you know what? You thin out the crowd. And you only bring in the serious people there to buy art. Right. I like the idea of just exposing the art to everybody. Yep. And, and come on, 90% of us are there, and we're not going to leave with a big, expensive painting. We're going to walk around. We're going to look and say, yeah, that looks beautiful. You know what I mean? Right. Well, while we're talking about you, some, you, uh, you know how to come back and know where to find yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. It's expanding yep. our mind. Yep. Hey, look, talk to me about some of the, 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 the pictures you brought. Well, I brought in three pieces. Okay. Uh, I'm actually the artist on the cover. Can you show so, that, that picture to them? They'll get a picture of that. You, have, you, which, are, the, you are the cover artist. Cover artist. Now, now I look, I look at this, though. I look at this. Let's get the glare off of that, like yeah. that. Oh, okay. excellent. Now, that looks like a really cool painting. It's, yeah, I've been told that sometimes my work looks like painting. But that's a, that's a photograph. That's yes, really it is cool. a photograph, and that's I don't enhance it. I'm, I'm still using negative film. Okay. Well, look, you're talking through some of your other uh, pictures. This here. piece is from Malta, uh, Twisted Ladder or rusted ladder, if you like to call it that. Um, How'd you come up with the name? I know, it's, it's, uh, it's a hard one to come by. <laughs> All right, and then if we, uh, if we pan down, now this must, this must be from the it's same It's the same series. harbor in Santa Margarita, Italy. And oh, I've been there, just south of Portofino. Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful place, great food too. Wow. And so I chose that, and that is just the right time of day to catch the angle. Talk to me about this because this, no. And that it, is on a Venetian rainy day. No, wait, I, gotta, I really want people to see this at home. I don't want to drop anything here. Yeah, a Venetian rainy day. I was actually in a museum and I looked at a teeny window to catch that. So it's just bring cool, your camera man. with you on rainy days. Well, let me just tell everybody that, hey, the Holtz Children's Hospital Bow Arts Festival uh, on art takes place adjacent to the Low Art Museum on the Coral Gables campus of the University of Miami. And it is this Saturday and it is this Sunday. Thank you very much. My and brother. congratulations on your last day. You know what? And your marriage. Yeah, you, there's so many changes going on at yeah. one time, right? See, this is what I love about the people of South Florida. You're, you're also darn nice. Hey. Do you know, this is not a nice thing to talk about at all, but did you know that Americans overpay the IRS by approximately $1 billion every year? Up next, we're going to have some tips for you so that you can make sure your money isn't added into that mix. Plus, you can save time and some more money by getting organized around the office. We're going to show you how coming up on South Florida Today. On NBC Daytime. I want to take this to court. Sean is Claire's father, not Philip. The custody battle begins. Philip abandoned her, Your Honor. He's here right now. With a surprise witness, days of our lives, and on passions, an obsessed ex-lover. She cannot marry this guy. We'll do whatever it takes. I won't let him hurt Teresa, even if I have to kill the guy. To be with a woman he loves. Days of our lives at one and passions at two on NBC Daytime. <laughs> There's something funny happening on NBC Thursdays. Earl Hickey made a difference. He's right. With Earl, The Office, Scrubs, and 30 Rock, the comedy's never smelled so fresh. Oh, pina colada goodness. Critics call it the best comedy lineup in decades. It's a dream team. We call it Comedy Night Done Right, and it's all new tonight on NBC. Then, a must-see season of ER continues with one big surprise. What a felony charge, Doc. Tonight on NBC. This is NBC6, South Florida Today. Well, like it or not, it's tax time again, and many of us are dreading that April 15th deadline because we know that we owe the IRS. 
Now, wouldn't it be nicer if you actually got some money back for once or twice? Well, joining me now is Frank Del Sol with H&R Block. And uh, let me ask you this. Is there a timeline that people should be following right now, things that they should be doing to make sure that they don't pay too much or maybe even get a refund? Actually, it should be right now. They should be consulting with a tax professional. Uh, the more you consult about the tax changes, tax law changes every year. If you don't consult, you don't know what deductions or what credits, how that affects you. And the more you find out, for example, that if a credit changed, you need to know about it. And if a deduction changed, you need to know so you can do that timely when you sit down and do your taxes. Okay, good idea. Now, today, you guys are going to actually have people out there helping people. Yes, we are. As a matter of fact, we have tax professionals at the Government Center in Miami. We're doing a National Tax Advice Day rally today, and we're there to give you advice. We're going to be throughout all of the, the United States giving advice to taxpayers on how they can save money, how to pay less taxes, and actually how to get a bigger refund. Does this cost me anything? Not a cent. Actually, it doesn't cost you a single penny. Also, you should get out there. We are going to be out there. As a matter of fact, as, as Lonnie mentioned, there's a lot of his uh, his changes in his lifestyle that are deductions or probably credits that are going to change in his, in his taxes. So if you've had a lot of changes in the previous year, you that's probably, I guess, a signal that maybe you should be doing some things. If you've had the changes, even if you haven't had the changes, the tax law changes, and you should be consulting with a tax professional to find out exactly how that affects you. Is that going to be more money in your pocket or is that going to be a different deduction you're going to take this year? What are some of the big mistakes people make that keep them from getting a refund or, again, paying more than they should? Sometimes they're as simple as not taking, for example, the earned income tax credit. Hmm. Most taxpayers don't realize that they're qualified for the earned income tax credit, the child tax credit. There's a lot of credits that you can take that most people don't realize they qualify and they don't ask for them. They wind up leaving the money at the table. The IRS keeps it. Oh, yeah, they sure do. They don't call you and say, hey, buddy. No, no they don't. <laughs> but, you know, you have three years to go back. If you bring your tax return to H&R Block, we can do a double-check challenge and see if you are uh, able to take those credits, and we can do an amendment and get you that money. You have three years to go back and get that money. That is good to know. And it might be kind of dumb, but can anybody get a refund? Uh, if you do a refund, yes, you can get a refund. But it's, in some cases, if you owe taxes, the best advice is check with a tax professional so you pay the least amount of taxes within the law. Now, let me ask you this. Usually, like, at the end of the year, I'll get something from my tax guy saying, do this, do this, do this before you get to the new year. Are there still things that you can do, though, that could minimize, you know, your tax, you know, your misery <laughs> and liability? Uh, yes, there is. For example, you can go ahead and maybe make a, a little bit more uh, contribution to your retirement plan, like your uh, 401k or Easy IRA. Mm. Uh, that will help you. Uh, some people, for example, before December, they made some plans and they went ahead and paid education and other things so they can take deductions. If you had a medical bill that you were just about to finish paying, paid it off and you could have taken deduction now. So there's things you could do, but the best thing is when you sit down with a professional, they can guide you and they can tell you, you know, you should start preparing this so when you get to that time, you can save more money. Okay, well, let's back up just a little bit because you keep talking about going to a professional, which I truly believe in. But what do I take to that professional? I mean, some people just pull out every ragged piece of paper and just, you know, come in and drop this stuff on the person. That's probably not the way to go. Uh, basically, uh, you can bring all your paperwork to H&R Block, a tax professional will sit down with you, whether you have it organized or not, and we can sit down and let you know exactly what you need to do with those papers and how we can arrange that so you can actually see where your deductions are, where your uh, credits are, and then we'll also let you know what else you need to bring in. So th whatever you have, bring it in. We'll be glad to sit down with you. It doesn't cost anything to sit down with us and talk about taxes. We could save you some money. And today's probably a good day to do that. The best day. We'll be out there talking to everybody about National Tax Advice Day, advising your taxes, how to save money, how to pay less taxes. All right, Frank, thank you so much. It's always wonderful seeing you, and I always feel wealthier when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me here. Certainly. Well, H&R Block's 90,000 tax professionals are hitting the streets, as Frank said today, to answer your tax questions. If you don't happen to just run into one today as you're out and about, just visit our uh, website, log on, and we'll tell you where the nearest location is. In addition, you can call any H&R Block location exactly. and ask where the closest location is to you, right? Right. The, any nearest H&R Block office will be starting today at the Government Center in downtown Miami. But also, the nearest h and Block office, walk in, and we'll be happy to help you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, coming up on South Florida Today, a fruity tropical history tour in South Florida will explain. Plus, bring the outdoors indoors. We're talking tiny topiaries. Stay with us. Traffic and weather together on NBC6, brought to you by the Miami-Dade Expressway Authority. MDX delivering improved mobility for you. This is NBC6, South Florida Today.
Wow. We've never, we never, we never really had this configuration before. You know there's, no. there's no script. Uh, there's no teleprompter. What shall we say? Lonnie, say yeah, I'm, Lonnie, Lonnie, look Lonnie the, is, this is his last day. Look at the teleprompter, and it does say Lonnie shows his underwear. Oh. Well, now that you've said that, we'll go ahead. We'll Let's go, ahead. go to the we'll, tape. We'll, we'll, go to the tape. Let's take a look. <laughs> Hank red, red. red. Yeah. red. <laughs> We're ready. We're ready for it. Good morning, to you, Pam. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, everyone. Yes, stargazing, fine. Get outside, check out Mars right now. I know Bob and Pam are talking about we were all supposed to be wearing red, and I apparently got the green memo. I told you I did get red on, Bob. Right there. There I am. Yeah. My but, box but of briefs. Let me, you, it, were you just carrying those no, in a it bag, wasn't or did a prop. you take those off? It no, wasn't Bob a prop. Those are your actual panties? No. <laughs> no, those... I just want to know. Inquiring just, minds want to know. The panties are just on the weekends. <laughs> yeah, only if it's a... Yeah. It's a, look, I'm not going to wear boxes Look, look who's my... shocked. Kelly is shocked <laughs> yeah. because I say something? Yeah. No, I, I just, I'm sad. Yeah, we're all sad. Oh, I don't yeah. like goodbyes. Sad. I'm a sentimental fool. I know, you, you I know. know. He's you gonna know, but, visit us. It, it, oh, come on. He'll always Clearly. be in our lives. Clearly. Guys, I, I, I'm, I'm marrying into a, a, a Brazilian family. That la, the Latina families are so tight-knit. I mean, we're coming back here every, every other weekend. Okay. And, um, and hey, th this job of mine has been absolutely fantastic. But my priority, and you and I have talked about this so many times, I have a nine-year-old oh, nine little boy that I got to continue to raise. And, and I have to do what's best for our future. And as of right now, we, we, we got together. We made the best decision that we possibly could, which is going to mean daddy's making an awful lot of traveling. Uh, we'll be making an awful lot of flights traveling yeah. back and forth. A lot or of money. Native, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> spending a lot, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, you know, Nate. Nate uh, is going to be here with his mom. So it means I'm here. My heart stays here. And, and the whole idea is to, to go away, as I said, get better at what I do and come back. And Melanie, we've got hundreds and hundreds of emails and there's a recurring theme among some of them. A lot of people don't know where you're going. Can we say yet where you're going? Uh, once I know. <laughs> as you know, look, there, there are a, a few different offers He's out there. so in demand no, that, you know, I mean, the offers have been just no, coming in like day and night. No, I've it, been filtering through them. And I, I did get some people saying, you know, is it Atlanta? <laughs> there, I have, uh, there's this possibility for me in Los Angeles and a possibility in New York. And, and uh, in, in our business, a lot of times we, we strive to get to, to those markets just and for a career move. what about the one on the big stage in London? Remember that one? Uh, yeah, the big, <laughs> you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to lead the revival of cats. It it's going to be great. <laughs> I, think you, I think you'd be good with snow. Let's okay. go to, let's go to the snow tape. All right. The snow tape. Back, back out live to Lonnie Quinn playing in the yeah. snow. Yeah. You know, I'm getting so teamed up on him by a bunch of people. Whoa. <clears throat> hey, Lonnie. Yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> Lonnie, you are in South Florida, right? Yep, right here in... Wow. Quickly, why don't you tell us why you were there? And... Good, no, are we going to see anything? Yeah, show the kids. Show the kids who are pummeling me. It's, we're at Cooper City. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cooper City. Can you hear me? We can hear Cooper. you. I'm in Cooper City. Yeah, you are. Or, yeah, never mind. All right. Lonnie Quinn. If you're not doing anything, yeah. Only Lonnie. Oh, Lonnie. What a sport. <laughs> yeah. that, it, hey, you know, that was, I think I, I, I said on the early, uh, the early news, uh, that was for this little girl who was battling cancer and um, the light 101.5, they, they did a, a fundraiser and that was all part of it. And I will give you the latest update that I have, which is at least a year after that. Uh, she's doing fine. The that little was girl. fantastic. Great. But you know what, Lonnie? I, I think one of the things that people love so much about you is when you were out live. I mean, you just brought a whole new element to live yeah. TV on so many occasions that no other reporter in this market has ever been able to Because you're willing to, to do or try anything, no matter how it makes you look. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? That's yeah. Cool. yeah, and he has fun with it. I, I suppose if, if you go out there with, you know, you know, no expectations of having to, you know, I don't know, keep some sense of decorum about yourself, then you can experience these or things. And, and, exactly, and you can fall on your face. <laughs> uh, but but the, the funny part about, uh, about, about TV news, at least my take, on, on TV news is that so often, and we can all relate to this, when you're out doing a story and you're telling your news story, and then there's a part where the reporter is on camera, all right, it's called the stand-up. So many times you'll be out there and you'll be taping it, and if you flub a word, or if, you know, like maybe, I don't know, like, you know, a, a palm frond falls like on your shoulder, your head or something, say, cut, cut let's, let's tape it again, because you want it to be perfect. Right. I specifically want them not to be perfect, because I, I think no part of life is perfect, and we always have little, Goof ups and things like that. So I, all my stance and all my and all my news stories, even the hard news stories, right? They came well, out. You know how they what? came out. We have so many letters from people about you, and I'm just going to read a quick line from one. It says, um, "The way in which you present the weather is unique. We will miss your style and positive humor. 
all television personalities should be more like you, which all of us are like fretting here right now. <laughs> on sweaty yeah, <laughs> and we wish you much success and hope to see you in south florida again sincerely happy sam hannah happy sam and hannah forrestal and so many of these i mean they're all like yeah. this Lonnie. to be honest i've read i read personally hundreds of them and there were only two that had anything oh not I, nice I, to yeah, say. No, and, and i uh, no i was that, only, only two that had something nice to say the two of us i want to say two things quickly i want to say number one of course that ryan is joining the morning show and yes. kelly will be joining the 10 o'clock show every day on, on a permanent Aww. basis which she has spiced it up every time yeah, she she's is. been here for you to to take over the whole thing i don't know baby. what's no, scary nobody can take your place Lonnie, yeah. final, oh, if there's anybody oh, final words my friend final words final words then i i i will address all of you as a whole uh what a privilege it has been. Uh, how much I love you guys, and we don't get that in this business because you don't stick around long enough for that to happen, but I have found some of the best friends in my life, not just my professional friends, but uh, hey, the three people you see sitting next to me up here, they're all gonna be at my wedding, so it, uh, it tells you something right there. Well, and you know what? He shows me love every morning back in that weather office. You know what? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna be right back. Throw it a break. Throw it a break. Throw it a break. We're not going fast we're enough, are right Oh, yeah. yeah. Traffic and weather together on NBC6, brought to you by the Miami-Dade Expressway Authority. MDX, delivering improved mobility for you. Watch Jackie Nesbrough at 11 on South Florida Tonight. This is NBC6, South Florida Today. How much do you really know about South Florida? From Flagler Street to Goulds, the Sunshine State has a full and colorful history, and in some places, even an edible history. And if you want to learn, there's a fun way to do it. Joining me now is Robert Burr with Rob's Redland Riot Fruity Tropical History Tour. Well said. I could never, ever say that if I wasn't actually reading it because it's a long, <laughs> it's a long name. What in the world is it? Well, the idea is uh, if you take the time to take a little trip out through the Redland area, through our rural countryside, you're going to find a lot of goodies. And there's an interesting history to the place. So uh, I thought, what a good idea to combine little bit of a history lesson because a hundred years ago they were pioneers they had no electricity everybody was in the agriculture business they and grew we're looking things. by the way at some pictures right they now of things. the red yeah and and of course we have this incredible bountiful countryside that really people don't don't realize that if you just take a little trip out there, you can come back with all sorts of wonderful stuff. So okay, why but not? you don't want to just go out there and start aimlessly wandering street to street. You got to kind of know what you're doing. It's a big place, right? And people get lost. They say that that place where they make those sticky buns is that mm -hmm. coconut palm, silver palm? Which one of those palms so is it? So do you tell them where to go, or do you take them? Yeah, what I did is just to to help my friends in the beginning. I made a map, mm -hmm. and the map shows uh, where to go. Oh, let me see. Well, okay. you know, I made a little booklet, but this is a free tour, and so I don't make any money at it. My wife said, those booklets cost too much money. So I just made a website. So now you just go to the website, you download it. You can it, print, that, print the whole thing Print yourself. the whole thing out, you get the map. And the idea is throw your, your friends in the car and go on a tour and get some goodies. It, it's all based on when I was a little kid. This is what we did. All right, well, give, tell us, us what the, you brought and show us some of the things that we can do right. And you're talking about having a vacation in our own hometown. That's right. And okay. this is, the, you know, we're not Napa Valley, but we do make wine. Well, but, tell us about it. You know, I have read that, and yeah. I've never been to the uh, I've never been to the winery there. Well, Peter Schnebley is a guy who knows how to make tropical fruit into wine, mm -hmm. and what a wonderful thing! Because nobody drives past a winery, do they? No, you have no to stop. Way. You want to taste it, and and the man is a very uh, a savvy businessman, and and he's the largest lychee grower in the South. And he was telling me he had about 125,000 pounds of lychees that might have a little blemish, or maybe they were a little too ripe to to ship. Yeah. And he was throwing them away. And so a friend of his said, Peter, why don't you make wine out of those? And it just hit him like, why not? So there so, you go. So, so now you can go wine. and tour the winery and have uh, and taste the wine while you're there. That's right. And some of the outstanding wines that he makes are the mango, mm -hmm. the uh, lychee, the guava, the carambola, which is the star fruit, mm -hmm. makes an excellent wine, and the passion fruit, fabulous wine. Now, I know where these come from. I've lived in South Florida all my life. But right. tell, tell our viewers about these. Okay. Well, there's a, there's a family out there named the Noss family. It's K-N-A-U-S. And people say, well, are they, uh, are they Amish? Are they Mennonites? No, they're, they're German Baptists, but they make baked goods like your great grandmother did a hundred years ago. Just the best that I've ever tasted in my life. And, and they're hot Fresh, out of the oven. Hot, you got to eat them right sticky then, Sticky and right? sweet. That's right? right. There's nothing better. 
And and uh, and they answer the phone all day, reminding people who live here where they are. Because it's confusing. Don't they also make shakes, or is that another? They place? do. That, they yeah, make thought, shakes. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. It all started off. Let me point to the strawberries over here. Right. It all started off with the Burr family, which is my cousins, Burr's Berry Farm. They've been doing it since 1960, selling strawberries. Uncle Charlie, who was known as the Strawberry King, he loved ice cream and he loved strawberries. And one day it just hit him. Why put don't them we put them together? <laughs> And there's a long line outside the place that, that goes around the corner, and it's been that way for years. So you have to stop by Burr's Berry Farm and get some strawberries Absolutely. and milkshakes. One of, the, one of the interesting stops along the way also, after the Noss Berry Farm, is the Rare Fruit and Spice Park. And have a look at this, Bob. This is an unusual melon that comes from Vietnam. It's called the Gak Melon, but the nickname is the Devil's Guts. Ooh. And I think you can see of why. Of course. So uh, it's it's kind of outrageous. It's yeah. really rich in vitamins and minerals. It's a great uh, great little product. We've only got about 30 seconds left. I want to get to the final two things. Yes. Gorgeous orchids. Right. One of the best orchid growers in the South is Bob Fuchs. And RF Orchids is his award-winning uh, uh, show place of orchids. I Same mean, Fuchs it's unbelievable. At, from Fuchs Park? Yeah, Fuchs Park and his family started Wholesome Bakery. Ah, okay. And he's a fourth-generation uh, uh, guy local uh, historian and, and an outstanding orchid grower. And finally? Uh, Robert is here, the greatest fruit stand in the world. On your way to the Everglades, you can't get there without going by Robert is here fruit stand. Started off with a little kid with a tray table and some cucumbers, and now he has the most incredible cornucopia of exotic fruits and vegetables there is. Incredible. Just love this segment. Thank Sa you very much okay. for being Saturday, here. Saturday, we're all going to meet out there at Colley Square, yeah. and we're going to do a riot. It's going to be about 100 cars, and. Everyone's invited to join us, so come Fantastic. to Collie Square at noon. All right. Rob's Redland Riot Tour begins at Collie Square. That's on Old Dixie Highway. It will end at the Redland Hotel on South Flagler Avenue. By the way, it is the Redland and not the Redlands, Redland. Right? Okay. Yeah. For a complete map, driving directions, or more information, log on to our website at NBC6.net. Once you're there, click on South Florida Today, and we'll connect you. Kelly? It's one of the most beautiful orchids I've ever seen. Thank you, Bob. If you can't get out to enjoy the great outdoors, why not bring the outdoors in? I'm not talking about the giant palms and ferns that you see, but a small, simple plant that could even be considered art. Joining me now is our friend Sandy Lynch with the Fort Lauderdale Garden Club. And today we're talking about the trend that is sweeping everywhere, every place, and that is topiaries. Yay, I love them. I know you do. What is planning the, to do that, right? Yeah, I am. I, this little number would look great in my new bedroom set. Right. Tell me about what exactly is a topiary. A topiary at this point is any plant that can be coaxed into a particular form, whether it's an indoor plant or an outdoor plant. It comes from way back at Roman times, you know, opus topiarum meant ornamental gardening. And so now it's re enjoying a resurgence. It's everywhere. It's in stationary. Oh, yeah. On plates, this oh, is from gosh, our yeah. friend Emmy. You remember Emmy? Oh, who could forget Emmy? And plaques. Yep. Well, and you know where I think most people would say, oh, is that a topiary? That's what it is. When you go to Disney World and the train pulls up and you see all the plants growing on Mickey and Minnie, exactly. that's what a topiary is. And yeah. everything else is sort of a, pardon the pun, offshoot. <laughs> right, and here is one. Now that Look you mentioned this. Disney, yeah. this is a dolphin that's from a friend of mine, and this has creeping fig all over it. It's on a wire form with moss and soil inside. Now, Sandy, I would bet a lot of people would want to do this, but they're intimidated because they think it's high maintenance. Is it? This one is great if you can keep it outside and just hose it down because it does require a lot of water and that's why you see it outdoors at Disney where they've got all right. the access to do that. Well this is clever. I see how it's hung here. You have a, a big long S hook and what is that a fish swivel on there? I guess so yes. Look at that. That is really clever so it can kind of go with that. And so how long does it take for say a bald topiary to start taking shape? Does it depend on what you it grow? It depends on how much you start off with too you know. Okay. And, uh, she bought this, I guess, about a year ago, and Beautiful. it's doing very well. Very nice job. Now, this is pretty, and just to show the folks how talented you are, because okay. you would never say that, you made this this morning. It's gorgeous. Yes, this is a fresh flower topiary. We use an oasis ball. Mm -hmm. We have a stalk that is uh, in a piece of styrofoam, and then after you soak this ball, you put water, uh, soaking it very thoroughly, then you cover it with the greenery and then add the flowers. Well, you know what? It, um, how long did that take you to do, Miss? Uh, about a half an hour, really. See how beautiful that looks? Yeah. And you could even go farther with twirlies and exactly. everything like that. Or ribbons hanging down, anything oh, like that. Oh, yeah. Now, yes. see, if you're on a budget, how much did something like that cost to make? I think this is about $3, and then you can get those bunches of flowers at the supermarket, et cetera, yeah. you know, and put in as many as you want or as much greenery. You can do it with all greenery, too. Or if you're doing, say, um, 
a centerpiece, you would make the stalk lower so people can see. Right. Love it. Now this cat is very frightened. It's petrified. Is that yes. another example of... Uh, Look, are those little air plants on those that Those are. These are uh, bromeliads. They're called telancias, actually, and I'm just going to mist it occasionally, and hopefully it's going to grow very well. This is a <laughs> new cute. experiment. <laughs> it's the same idea as this. It's a metal form with soil and moss. Now, this Ooh. is something totally different. These are the wire forms that you put uh, ivy mm -hmm. and other creeping uh, plants on. Here's, I love that. Here's a neat one. I haven't tried this one yet. This you'll be seeing a lot of in the near future. Well, Sandy, oh yeah, with the Valentines. I always see that at the art show. Right. Look, all of a sudden we have to be Houdini <laughs> to get this damn thing off. Right. <laughs> there, there we go. go. And that's a, sort of a New England one. Looks like a butterfly. Here's thing a like a bee. The da 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 and a punch of Ali. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> She's looking like, you need to be, go back to the home. <laughs> and then this one is kind of cute. You can just have them going up and open your garden gate. Now, you show this ivy here. Tell us on a scale of 1 to 10 the difficulty factor. This one is a little more complicated. Yeah. This is a work in progress. It's relatively newly put in, so the ivy is looking a little wilted today. But uh, it takes a while to wind all of this ivy up and down. And then after that, it's pretty much easy. You water it about once a week, just like this one. That's what I like about the ivy. And you can also put it in things like this, Ooh. a little... Uh, decoration for your table. Instead of having just normal candlesticks, you can have your ivy candles. Well, they're telling us to wrap it up, but before we do, I just wanted to show you. Look at this. Real pretty. Look at these great party. ideas. You could have a topiary party. You give everybody the same sort of basic materials and then give them different um, embellishments. And look how beautiful that could be. As usual, Sandy, thank you so much. You're thank such a you. creative lady. It's so fun, fun to work here. with you. For more information on the Fort Lauderdale Garden Club, log on to our website at NBC6.net, and we will connect you. Marilyn Monroe, Natalie Woods, Sandy Lynch. Oh. Coming up, we'll have a preview of the International Gem and Jewelry Show, where you can check out some of the jewelry worn by those stars up close and personal light. It's a brand new year. My new motto is live and learn. And next, Martha, you haven't lived until you've learned to make Aunt Flora's famous cobbler. I found this talented baker in Cincinnati. And she's here as our America Cook series continues. Plus, her hats are worn by the biggest celebrities. Now learn to make your own designer hat. It's surprisingly easy. Then, what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat. Very good advice. How to keep that New Year's resolution to stay healthy. All new, next Martha. Today at 11 on NBC6. This is NBC6 South Florida Today. Well, throughout the years, millions upon millions of dollars in gems and jewels have walked the red carpet, but few of us ever get to see them up close and personal until now. The International Gem and Jewelry Show opens in South Florida tomorrow, and it features some of the most exquisite pieces from the silver screen, as well as a few modern day pieces you have to see to believe. Well, joining me is Bill Vance with the International Gym and Jewelry Show. And you've got a lot of great stuff here. And you've got some big titles too. Right. Yeah, tell me some of those big titles. Well, if you look really close at, at this particular gold piece right mm -hmm. here, that's the original Cobra from Sylvester Stallone. Oh, really? Yes. And the uh, compact here is uh, Mary Pickford's with <gasps> diamonds on the top of oh, it. Oh my gosh. And this is a, a necklace from Cher. And everybody knows this gentleman right here. Unfortunately, he's passed away a, a personally made pendant for Liberace. Amazing. And some of the other pieces that we have out here, these, this is costume, this one. Is it really? And this one. That looks like the real thing. And those are mostly the ones that get worn by the celebrities. You, they don't wear the real stuff like some I'm do. wearing now? Well, some do. Oh. But some don't. Oh, interesting. Oh, yes. Okay. It's very exciting. And, uh, this is uh, all sapphires here and with diamonds well, and you know, I pearls. don't think of sapphires as being in these other colors. I mean, you think of a sapphire as being blue. Every color of the rainbow. You can get a sapphire in every color of the rainbow. Oh, that's amazing. And quite ironically, this little stone right here, this green one, mm -hmm. that's actually a garnet. That's a garnet? Mm -hmm. You can get four types of green garnets. This particular one comes from the Marilani Hills, which is in Tanzania, uh, right where they get the Tanzanite. So if it's green, does that mean it's a lot rare and more expensive? Yes, yes exactly. And some of the green garnets are Savorites, Demantoids. There's a wide range of, of different types, and they all have different names. Huh. 
fascinating stuff. Now, if you don't know a whole lot about gems like you do, because you've got all those fancy titles, why should you come out to the show this weekend? Oh, there's something there for everybody. There's there's beads, there's high-end pieces of jewelry, there's low-end pieces of jewelry, uh, quality merchandise at very good prices. And the stuff from the silver screen, is that just for people to look at? So oh, I some can... of it's for sale. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you know what? This really caught my eye. <laughs> this is, and I, and I thought, oh, I'll buy that from you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. For one of my nieces. Okay. Uh, you have to put a few zeros onto that. It's, uh, uh, like half 500, a million bucks. Oh, half a million bucks? $500,000. Oh, That's my gosh. That's the most gosh. expensive brat doll you'll ever see in your life. Jeez, and what makes it so expensive? Oh, those are all diamonds. The pants are all diamonds. All diamonds. And even around her neck and the little necklace and everything. Those are all diamonds. Too cute. I mean, so is that just for eye candy? That's, you know, does somebody like I'm own sure something like that? I'm sure if you came in and offered uh, half a million dollars for it, <laughs> they'd sell it to you. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I'll be doing that. Well, again, the, there is a wide range of different types of jewelry out there, too. The 18 karat gold. You can also get the costume jewelry at the International Gem Shows, too. Okay. And uh, it's it's uh, an enjoyable thing. Uh, my wife and I do about 40 of them a year. So you I'm must go all over the world. Too. Yeah, I've, I've actually been to Sri Lanka four times this year already. What or makes someone year, like a you know like a specialist in and an expert in gems and jewels like you are? Well, it's a never-ending process. Oh, uh, constant we learn education. constantly. Uh, there's new things coming out, new treatments, and you just have to keep educated and read and read and read. What's and the most with it. exquisite thing you've ever seen? Uh, something I actually just bought in Sri Lanka. I was over there about nine weeks ago, and I bought a red taffite. Wow. Very rare stone. Uh, you don't see them very often in, in, in any particular color, but a red one's really rare. Okay, well, thank Some you, Bill. I hope a lot of folks come down to the International Gym and Jewelry Show. It'll be open at the Broward County Convention Center in Fort Lauderdale tomorrow through Sunday. And for more information for tickets and showtimes, just log on to our website at NBC6.net. Lonnie, I had yeah. a few presents for you, but then I Did looked really? at my checkbook and I'm I couldn't happy. afford anything. Well, you're not, so. well, you don't like dolls anyway, do you? <laughs> But he's he has a gem. one dollar. <laughs> yes, 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 he wow. does. I mean, this is some major uh, yeah. blingage bling. going on yeah. here. Well, the, the bling is really nice here, but when you go down there, there's a lot more stuff. Really, a lot. No, of you stuff. know the flask. <laughs> I, why did I know he was going to no, go no, for that? No, 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 because because you know I was looking for like groomsmen uh, gifts, and everybody does the flask. I kind of want to do something sort of different. And Kel came up with a great idea. We what, can't talk about it because they're probably listening right now. I was thinking sunglasses. Sunglasses okay, for all the girls uh, well, with a certain man. What? Yeah, hey, no, this is this is in fact the swan song. Oh! <laughs> it has been a pleasure Go ahead, give us a kiss. Come here. You bother. <laughs> Bonnie, you got lipstick all over you. We spend our lives looking for a job <laughs> like this. NBC6 is South Florida's news leader. Join us for iVillage Live, a show that celebrates you today at noon. And for news 24 hours a day, visit us on NBC6.net.